Hey YouTube, so today we're going to take a look at what is provisioning services and we'll go through the actual initial installation of PVS. Something to note, this will probably be about a four or five part series because PVS itself is just a monster and if I was to go through everything that encompasses PVS it would probably take me over an hour and I'd like to keep this video probably around like the 10 to 15 minute mark. Uh, but as you can see here, I did a quick write-up of what provisioning services is. Really, it, it allows you to have that single image management for your Citrix virtual desktops and applications. So you can literally manage a single image and you can stream that image to thousands of devices at once. So it makes it very easy. However, there is some initial upkeep and requirements for PBS. You do need additional servers. Um, it's really only beneficial for pool desktops, but you get that that benefit of ease of management, ease of testing, ease of troubleshooting with with being able to do different um, different versioning with the actual VDIS. It also helps reduce storage costs greatly. Not that storage is that expensive, and also you do need to have either Zen Desktop Enterprise or Zen App Platinum to be entitled to provisioning services. So I definitely recommend checking your studio console, making sure you're on the right licensing. And if you're not, reach out to your Citrix app and just get upgraded if you see benefits of moving to provisioning services. So first thing I'm gonna do, just to show you where I installed um, my PBS software, I just search Citrix PBS download. It tends to be what I always do is Google's God and great for everything. So I did a quick search here, just choose random edition. It will ask you for your Citrix logon credentials. I put mine in and I could just download the file here. So I already have it on my desktop. So to simplify that, I'm just gonna launch my ISO and we're gonna choose auto run. And you'll see there's a, a few options here. We're gonna install the server and the console, but we'll do the server first. And on the actual endpoint, you would install the target device installation. And that's that agent that communicates to the PBS server. So let's do the server installation first. So one thing to note with this as well is you'll probably want another repository on your PBS server, depending on if the size depends on what you're going to be doing, uh, how large your large your actual image is. But this is where you'd store your actual virtual disks. So this would be called a local storage repository. You can also do a, a shared storage repository and you can have multiple PBS servers share that same um, location, which there's some benefits of because now you only have to manage one location, but there's also some cons of that. So just note the pros and cons of having local versus, versus um, shared. So you can do a quick Google search to find that out. And for the actual installation, this is pretty straightforward. It's kind of just like, hey, next, next install. And if all goes well, it should launch the configuration wizard automatically. In that error you saw earlier, that was just telling me I need the console, it doesn't find it. Also to note, I highly recommend that you have all of your Windows updates because if you don't, you're gonna get an error when it comes to installing PBS. Um, I ran, in that, ran into that multiple, multiple times. So this is that, jumping back, this is the configuration wizard to actually set up our settings. So something to note here, you have different options when it comes to how your devices are gonna boot and get that initial IP address assignment. So if you have DHCP running on this server, you would choose that. If you're using uh, boot P service on this provisioning on this provisioning server, you go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna be using a DHCP server running on a, a different server. And same idea here, if I'm using Pixie, um, uh, if I'm doing Pixie boot, I'd go ahead and say provisioning service, Pixie service on this server but I'm gonna do BDM first, Boot Device Manager. So I'll go ahead and skip the Pixie service option and just go back and edit that later. And let's create a new farm. You're gonna to wanna to point this to your SQL server. 
So my server name is Ryan One, just because I have a lab environment and I had to use my servers for multiple functions. So you will need a SQL instance. And I'll call this PVS. And my farm name, I'll call Ryan's farm. And for my site, let's call it Ryan's site. And Ryan's collection. And for the store, I'll keep that as store. And this is where you're gonna browse to that VDisk repository location. So again, this could be a local or shared storage. With local storage, one thing to know is you have to manually copy your VDisk when you create a new one. So there is a little bit of overhead and, and time associated with that, but not a big deal. Oops, that's not my license server. So you need to point this to your license server. And for your network service account, typically you probably specify your uh, network, an actual service account, but I'm just gonna use my admin credentials I'm logged into right now. And it will be using that service account for, for two services that are running on your PBS server. So if those credentials are ever wrong, you would need to go and update those services with, with the new credentials. Um, in terms of TFTP and bootstrap location, so if I was using um, TFTP with, let's say like, uh, with DHCP option 6667, I'd make sure I'd enable this, but I'm not doing TFTP, so I'll go ahead and skip that. I can enter my Citrix credentials to send report configurations when things go wrong, but pass that. And we'll go ahead and finish, and if all goes well, it's going to stop all these services and then it's going to start them up. And this is one of the probably the most common problems you'll see. If, if after you install the console, which we'll do right after this, um, and it just won't connect once you try to connect to your PBS farm, chances are one of your services has incorrect credentials associated with it. Um, it's one of, one of the common errors you'll see with PBS fairly often. So by the way, the server installation is done. So now we're gonna install the console so we can actually go in and make sure everything installed correctly. So again, just next, 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 install, very straightforward and finish. So now if I search provisioning services, you'll see I have the console here. I have the configuration wizard if I did need to change anything. I have my boot device manager. So when I, if I do want to create like a partition or an ISO for my my um, boot file, I can go ahead and do that. But we'll do that on a, a separate video. Sex of that. And to connect a farm, I'm going to connect to localhost. And it looks like everything's going well. So I have Ryan's site here. I have Ryan's collection. I have my store and my farm up top here. So a couple things to note here, everything's good. The collections where I would actually go ahead and create devices. So if I did want to create um, a VDIS, let's say based on my master, I would put the MAC address of that master here. You'd probably tell it to boot from hard disk first. So it has that PVS communication, but it's still booting from its hard disk because there's no VDIS created as of yet. Um, but I'll, I'll go into more detail later on. And then the store is where we actually create our VDisk and we, where we store our VDisk. So that's that repository, repository I showed you earlier, this one here. So again, um, kind of short and sweet. This will be a four or five part video series. So if you do have any questions, please write in the comment box below. And if you did like this video, if it did help you go through your PBS install, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a like. And again, I will talk to you guys later and see you later in the, the next upcoming videos.